Hello, this video is called How DNS Works, and this is really about the big picture of how the DNS system is designed. So let's get started. First question, what's DNS? It stands for Domain Name System. And what it does is it resolves, it gets you the IP address for a domain name. So you ask a DNS server, what's the IP, for example, cat.com, and it'll reply with some IP address, right? Or, you know, facebook.com, whatever domain you want. So we're going to talk about how this works. And the first question is how, when you make this kind of query to a DNS server, um, how does it know that that IP address is the answer, right? Like, where did it get that? And one way that this could work, that you could imagine it working, is that you have some kind of central DNS server with all the answers. And when the IP addresses update out there and there in the world, they push those answers to that DNS server. Um, there's a big DNS server from Google called 8.8.8.8 um, that you might have seen. And so you can imagine that like anytime someone updates an IP address, they just tell Google that, about the updates and that works. Um, this is not how the domain name system works. Um, and in fact, be, and if it worked that way, you could sort of only have a finite, like a small number of DNS servers, right? Like it, it would be like only Google can have the DNS server. Um, and they have sort of like complete control of the system, or maybe you have like one or two big DNS servers. Um, but the reality is that actually anybody can run a DNS server. So um, there's an open source DNS server called Unbound. And if I set up that up on my computer today, and I start asking it, sending it uh, DNS queries, which are just UDP packets, I could be like, hey, what's the IP address? For example, cat.com. Unbound will give me the right answer. Um, it'll tell me the real IP address. So like, we have the same question, right? Of like, where is Unbound getting this information, right? Because like, if I just set it up, it obviously doesn't have like every IP address, like every result hard coded into it. Like it's just a like little open source project. Um, so how does this work? Um, and the first thing you need to know is that there are two kinds of DNS servers. There are authoritative servers and recursive servers. And Unbound is a recursive DNS server and we're going to explain what both of those mean right now. Um, so an authoritative server um, is, it's sort of in the name, it's, it's, it's like I'm the authority, for example, cat.com. And what that means is that I know, it knows the IP address, for example, cat.com, which is like 159 point whatever. Like it decides what that IP address is that example cat.com resolves to. Um, and the way that a DNS server becomes the authority, because not just any server could be the authority, that would be very insecure. The way a DNS server becomes the authority uh, for a domain like examplecat.com is the owner of that domain, um, in this case me, because I own the silly domain, um, I tell my domain registrar, hey, the authoritative DNS server for this domain is, let's say, AWS Route 53. It could be Cloudflare. It could be anything. There's like hundreds of different services, which will which will be the authoritative DNS server for you. You could run the, an authoritative DNS server on your laptop too, like on a server in your house. You could just be like, hey, um, this is the IP address of the server I have in my house, and this server in my house is the authoritative, authoritative DNS server. Um, yeah. So and an authoritative DNS server is the same thing as a name server, if you've seen that. So when if your domain registrar asks you to set the name servers for your domain, that's the authoritative DNS server. And that's where all of the recursive DNS servers out there, like 8.8.8.8, are gonna go to look to get the IP address for your domain name. Um, all right, so there's two kinds. There's authoritative and then there's recursive. Let's talk about recursive for a second. So the way a recursive DNS server works, like Unbound or like 8.8.8.8, .8 is it's kind of like, I don't know anything by myself. I just ask the authoritative server where to go. So if I'm looking up like examplecat.com or we're gonna do my.horse later, um, we're gonna pretend to be a recursive DNS server. Um, it just asks the authoritative servers for the answers and then it tells you what the authoritative server says. And the other thing it does is it does some caching, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Okay. So the basic setup whenever you're doing a DNS query is that there's you, you ask the recursive DNS server for let's say examplecat.com, it then goes to a bunch of authoritative servers to get the answer and then it returns you back uh, the IP address that it got from the authoritative servers. 
uh, and authoritative servers exist in layers. So there's not just one authoritative server, right? Kind of, kind of like we said, um, like the authoritative server for my like toy domain examplecat.com could be a server that I have in my house, right? So there are tons of different authoritative servers, and you you need to find those authoritative servers. Um, so they exist in layers. There's uh, usually three layers that you deal with when you're making a DNS query. So you have the root DNS servers, and these ones are there's maybe thirteen of them, and they're hard coded and they're and they're really like a core part of the internet. Um, they don't their IP addresses, I believe, don't ever change, and they're probably like hard coded into your like on your computer. And then below that, you have the .com name servers, or the .ca name servers, or whatever like your uh, like top level domain is. And we're go we're gonna look all of the at all of this more concretely in just a second. And then below that you have uh your name server that you set for your domain, which could be Route fifty three, it could be Cloudflare, it could be my laptop in my house, whatever. And so here's a little comic that shows what happens when you query your recurse DNS server. Um so the recursive DNS server first is like, hey, I wanna know like where Jevons.ca is to the recurse DNS the root DNS server, and it's like, oh, ask the .ca DNS server, right? Because this is a .ca domain. Um, and so the answer is going to be on the .ca DNS server. And then it asks again, like, where's Jevons.ca to the .ca server? And the, that's like, and the .ca server is like, oh, well, I know that the name server for that is Cloudflare, so go ask Cloudflare. And then it goes in and asks Cloudflare, and it's like, hey, where's Jevons.ca? I want to know. Um, and then Cloudflare will give it back a couple of IP addresses. And then it's done, making the DNS query. All right, so now it's example time. We're done with all the, the theory, and we're going to actually make uh, some DNS queries. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend to be a recursive DNS server ourselves. So we're going to do basically everything that a recursive DNS server would do to make a DNS query. And I'm going to do all of this with dig. So dig is uh, just something that lets you make DNS queries. So if I, like, we're talking about examplecat.com. If I do dig examplecat.com, that'll make a request for examplecat.com. I think. Yeah, it's making this to a local DNS server on my machine, um, and it it finds out the IP address is like one five nine point six three point two one six point two three two. We could also ask a different uh, recursive DNS server for the same thing. And kind of interestingly, like if I ask Google Google's DNS server eight dot eight dot eight for the IP, for example, cat dot com, it actually gives me a different IP address. Um, which is sort of interesting. We could we could we could try to sort that out later. Let me just see quickly if I can find out anything about this. No. If you do dig dash x, um, that does a reverse DNS lookup for an IP address, and sometimes it'll tell you something about that IP. Um, just like really quickly as an example of that, because it's kind of fun. If you do like dig google.com and then you do dig dash x, it'll tell you like oh. This IP address is like yul 3 so 2 in f14.1e100.net because 1e100.net is like a Google domain that they use for a lot of their like that you see on their reverse DNS lookups a lot uh, because one to the power of 100 is Google. It's really cute. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, the the point is we're 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 gonna um, see what happens behind the scenes when we make a DNS query for examplecat.com. All right, so, all right. I have the IP address of a root DNS server here. It's a 198.4.0.1. And we're gonna ask it about com. Um, all right, so now it's saying the authorities for com are these things like e.gtlcservers.net and it gives me their IP addresses. So I can just pick anyone I want. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use 192.42.93.30. Um, th this at symbol here just says dig use this server when you're making the DNS query. Um, all right, so now I'm going to ask uh, that server for examplecat.com. And it's not giving me an, an IP address as an answer here. Instead, what it's saying is like, hey, this is the name server that's going to give you your answer. And there's actually four different name, name servers. We, and we can see um, 
maybe a little later if those will actually give me like if maybe they return different answers we can see and then if i go ask one of those uh for the ip address it'll tell me okay it's 104.248.60.43 and we can try a few different ones. Yeah, so actually, if I ask these DNS servers for an IP address, for example, cat.com, they actually always return a different IP, which makes sense because examplecat.com is served by some big content delivery network. Um, so there's lots of different servers there which have lots of different IP addresses, and they all work just fine. Uh, so I guess that, yeah, if I make a, a DNS query to the, to the authoritative server, it'll give me lots of different IPs. Um, and you can see that changing, that's right here. Um, and I guess this is why if I ask 8.8.8.8 for an IP, and if I ask my local DNS server for an IP, I get different answers. Okay, great. So we've made a DNS query for examplecat.com. We've done exactly what the recursive server would do, which was to start with the root name server, um, and then to, to go to uh, the like .com server and then to uh, query the name server. L l let's do another one of those. We're going to look up my.horse, which is actually, there's not really a lot at this domain, but I think it's funny that it ends in .horse. Um, so if you just do dig my.horse, you see the IP is uh, 89.31.143.1, which like, okay, sure. So, so let's ask the root, uh, the root DNS server about dot horse. So we, we again start with like this, this root server, which I just have the IP for, cause I think it's hard coded on my computer somewhere. Um, so we'll ask about dot horse and this is like, okay, DNS one dot Nick dot horse, which I guess makes sense that that's the, uh, name server for dot horse. <laughs> so we can ask one of those, um, about my dot horse over here. And then that says, okay, ns.udag.de or ns.udag.org. So like, who knows what that is, but we can ask it about my.horse. Um, and it gave us an answer. It said that the IP is 89.31.143.1, which is great. Um, and you can see that here we got the same answer, which I'm guessing what that means is that this, uh, this name, my.horse, really only has one IP attached to it, unlike example.com, which we saw kind of has lots of different IPs, uh, which the name server would return. The only uh, last thing I want to discuss really quickly is caching. So if we look at what happens when we ask uh, google.com about examplecat.com, you'll see that it's it's returning an IP address, um, 104.248.63.24, whatever. Um, and it, it'll often give me the same IP address, um, kind of a little more often than you would expect, or, or maybe more, uh, more concretely, we could just look, ask my local DNS server. And you can see that it's always giving me the same result. And this is weird, right? Because we know that the authoritative name server, for example, cat.com, does not always return the same result. It basically always returns a different result because example cat.com has lots of IPs. So what's going on, right? Like why is my local DNS server always giving me the same result? And the answer is uh, something called the TTL. Um, which is actually uh, related to this number right here, this 16. Um, and so the DNS record, let's see if we can uh, query that name server here. Yeah. Okay. So when we uh, ask for an IP address, for example, cat.com, it'll give us something called a TTL, which stands for time to live, which is the amount of time it's okay to cache that response for. So if we're in this case, uh, this TTL is pretty short. It's 20 seconds which is not that long. Um, if we, we can ask, try, try another, yeah, google.com is also quite short. It's something like five seconds. Uh, some domains, oh yeah, if I look up jevins.ca, which is my blog, that one has a five minute TTL. So that says like, if I give you an IP address, it's good for five minutes. 
Um, and sometimes you see longer TTLs. In general, people do prefer to keep TTLs short because if it's cached, like if you cat, if you keep an IP address cached for a day, that means that if you need to change the IP address quickly, you just can't, right? Because DNS servers are going to keep it cached. Um, so in this example cat.com case, you see that um, the TTL is 20 seconds. And if we keep on making this query, um, we're going to make the query for 20 seconds. Uh, the amount of time that's left before it expires, this like seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, keeps ex keeps counting down. Um, and then it starts again at the beginning and it gives us a new IP address. So that's a nice way to kind of see the cache in, in action to just uh, keep on running dig repeatedly. Uh, so that's all that I have to say about DNS for now. Thank you for listening.